So reviewing a watch against itself, how strange, but it's not identical. It's the same watch in specification, but a different color. Uh, so this is the black and gold version against the blue version, which is going to be the winner. You shall see. But to give you a better understanding of the, how the colors work, we've got outdoor shots, there's loom comparison, macro to see things really close. Is the quality control consistent? It's quite valid still. Are both the movements still running really good? Is one better than the other? It's actually quite helpful to compare two identical watches in a way. And then if the only thing separating them from being the ultimate watch is the color, that's down to choice then. So let's see how the blue one compares. See you in a moment. So here they are next to each other. This just drink it in guys. People were concerned that the blue one's going to be a bit too bright and garish. And it's just not going to do well compared to this black and gilt version. But reason why I think personally, the blue one works more successfully is because of the continuity and consistency between the color of the bezel insert and the dial. They're so closely matched. They they don't clash with each other. They work together. You haven't got a clash of polished bezel part here against the indices here. Whereas on this one, as, you, as I said in the main video of this one, got this polished stainless steel here right next to polished gilt. For some reason, that just was didn't work with my eyes. I just, <laughs> just can't explain it. But um, I do. I think this is a beautiful watch. Don't get me wrong. I still think it may have been better if the dial was darker. Maybe you kept this glossy bezel insert, just made the dial darker. It's just a bit too gray, but then people have argued correctly. I would agree as well. You could say it helps create a nice strong bit of contrast and it helps it pop. It's, it's, one, it's a weird one. I feel like I can talk about it so much. I don't know why it's such a hot topic of debate. Whereas this one, I just think the silver on the uh, dial with the text and the, the silver text, um, sorry, silver paint that's in the uh, bezel insert here and it's just it just seems really fresh and bright it's not trying too hard to be faux vintage you've got brighter indices you've know, got a whiter looking loom we've got blue bgw9 which looks a bit more contemporary and i just think as a sort of a more modern looking watch more modern take the blue one works but if you want proper vintagey style this one works and the reason why I wanted to do them side by side is because it's amazing what difference a bit of color can make to a design of a watch. Everything else about them is identical. The, the size, the weight, as you see, um, the movements, there's barely anything between them and their accuracy. And the loom is better on the blue watch. The BGW9 just is stronger and holds out a lot better for some reason. So. Is a combination of if, if you're into your loom a bit more, you'll be a bit more happy with the BGW9. Um, if you don't like blue watches, you're not going to like the watch. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's really down to personal taste. It, it's a bit more clean in design as well, because we've only got silver, blue, and uh, that's about it. Whereas this, you've got gilt, you've got polished uh, silver looking here with the gold inserts, so a gold paint in here, and then you've got um, sort of a matte gray dial then a dark glossy bezel insert and then you've got a red there it's quite a lot going on which adds character it is interesting but this one just pips it for me i've had time to think about this as you <laughs> i managed to make a, a third video about these watches i'm just so smitten with them so this is the one i'm going to keep this is the one i'm going to rehome because uh i don't need to because <laughs> i'm not totally brimming with cash much as I wish I was. Um, well, the other thing as well, as you see here with the way it's reflecting, got the that bluish AR coating. Works better for me as a design, having it on a blue watch. So you've got blue working with blue and it catches the light. Whereas this one, you've got blue clashing with all the other things going on with this. So clear, clear AR would have been better for this watch. So just to help you get another understanding of how these watches compare to each other. Here's a little outdoorsy section of them.
So as I alluded to earlier, let's do a little loom time lapse so you can get to see how good the loom is between these two and you get an idea of which is the best. Just now my standard 20 minutes sped up to 20 seconds so you get an idea of 20 minutes is a good way of seeing how well something's going to hold out fairly well. As you see, wash on the left is almost gone, the C3 loom in the black and gilt version. The BGW9 is holding out significantly better. So if you saw my full review of the black and gilt version, you saw that that was running really well. It's pretty much exactly the same with this one. It says minus five, uh, but it fluctuates, minus two, Depends on, I've tested it on all different settings and it's averaged out to being barely anything more than minus two to minus three overall, which is pretty much the same as the other one. It's fantastic timekeeping, but there's something I need to show you, which I just have discovered. Talking about quality control, there's something wrong. I just wanted to top up the movement to make sure it was a bit more wound for putting on the time grapher, which is what I do with all my watches, what you, it's fine to do, but something went wrong i'm turning this and it's gone really stiff let's see if you can hear this i put it up to the mic that is the sound of the rotor spinning away as i try and turn this so the watch effectively has broken so quality control not good um something's wrong with this i know someone's going to tell me in the comments what's actually happened but Something's gone wrong with my watch, so I'm going to be in touch with San Martin and let's see how good the customer service is. So, so the blue one broke. Um, I'm selling, <laughs> I'm selling the one which works beautifully, and I'm keeping the one which is broken. So I'm going to have to get that sorted. It's really annoying. I've, I'm not going to attempt to fix it myself. I'm not an expert enough anywhere near to how to do that. So I'll get in touch with San Martin and see what they can do. So. I still prefer the blue one. I still think the color works better for me personally, but many of you, obviously you love the gilt version, the, the black and gilt, it, it, it looks gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, I love them both, but slightly more the blue one. So what do you think? Have you enjoyed this little take on the comparison to give you a bit of a better understanding which one you would go for? Hopefully your one you receive won't have any issues. It shouldn't do, it's the first time it's happened for me, but I like to document that in the video as well because I did question earlier on in the intro, is the quality control consistent? How good are the PT5000 movements? Well, they're both running beautifully, but one of them uh, has got an issue already, which is the first for me, which is a real shame. It's probably bad luck. Um, but that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye for now.